Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to show you how to correctly install DDR5 RAM and also some of the things which you're going to need to do inside the BIOS to actually make sure that it works as it should do at its rated speeds and without blue screens of death and all those kinds of horrific things which can happen with a new build. So we're going to go through step by step. The first bit is going to be pretty straightforward, just actually installing the RAM, but we're going to do it at a slow pace so people that have not done this before can kind of uh, see how it all works. Um, things that they can check and obviously mistakes that can be made. We'll try and rectify those and also the secondary part will be taking a look in the system's BIOS so we can look at what settings need to be turned on, how to enable things like XMP, DOCP or Expo settings if you're on the AMD side of the fence. So you should be able to learn quite a few things here and actually some things are not always obvious especially things like memory context restore and also enabling memory paradigm both of which are really important things to do on the DDR5 platform for both Intel and for AMD systems. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is to familiarize ourselves with the actual RAM sticks themselves and look at some key things. So talking of keys, there is actually a key, which is that little central marker in the middle there. And that is designed so that you can install the RAM physically around the wrong way. Although the key itself is actually quite close to the center. So actually it is potentially possible to make the memory lock into place, but it still be round the wrong way, but it is extremely hard to do so. So you shouldn't really be able to do it, but again, we'll show you how that works and where the key is on the motherboard. Also things to note is the latches on the end. So you've got two latches on either end of the RAM. This is what locks the RAM into position and stops it falling back out when you put your system upright, that sort of thing. And another key point, is actually your memory timings. Now, if you're not too sure what your memory timings are, generally you'll find them printed on the back of the box somewhere, or you'll have a sticker actually on the RAM itself telling you the CAS latency and the memory timings. Also possibly things like voltage and serial numbers, all that kind of good stuff. Always worth checking, maybe even take a quick photo of that on your mobile phone or something, just so you've got it to reference, because when it's actually in your PC, it's gonna be quite hard to see. So if you want to take a quick snap of that now, so you can make sure the settings are right in your BIOS. Now for our installation, we're using this board. This is the MSI Z790 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. This is a full size ATX board and therefore has four memory slots. You may find that your motherboard is a smaller board and maybe it only has one, two or four slots or potentially if you're very lucky and you've got a very high-end system, you may have eight slots or more. Generally, the ATX layout is the one which we're most used to seeing, so this has four slots. And modern systems work in what they call dual channel mode, so that means the processor can access two separate channels of RAM at the same time and interleave them to enable faster throughput. Now, if that's a little bit confusing, don't worry, you don't really need to know how it works, you just need to know how to actually enable it. Now, to get a dual channel to work effectively, most motherboards will require you to install your RAM in certain slots. Now for the majority of cases, if you've got a typical layer like this with the four slots, you'll find that slots number two and number four, and that is with you counting from your CPU side outwards, two and four are gonna be your primary channels. So channels A and channels B. Quite often on the motherboard itself, there'll be a little note or little marker saying which channels to use and potentially you'll see something which says first on it, which means this is the ones you should use first. So if you're using four sticks of RAM, you still start off with slots two and four, but then you can also populate slots one and three. That will just be extensions of the first two slots. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry. You didn't need to worry about it too much, but just make sure you start off with slots two and four. If you're on a smaller board, which only has two slots, Generally, this doesn't come into play too much because you've just got two channels. If you've only got one stick of RAM, obviously just put it into either slot. It should be absolutely fine. But generally, most RAM comes in sets of two, so just fill up both slots. When you're physically installing RAM, ideally you want to do it onto a nice solid surface, something which is anti-static, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're just going to use the cardboard box that the motherboard came in. That should do the job very nicely. And I'm going to go ahead now and move the camera so we can get a really nice close-up shot of this so you can see how it's installed. Okay, so here we have our motherboard and we've got our sticks of RAM here. So this is our RAM slots, one through to four. So one, two, three, and four, four being the furthest one to the outside of the board. And we need to install into slots two and four. So you will find that there are retention clasps on your motherboard. Some have got one each end, so top and bottom. Some may only just have one. So just open up the ones you need. So we'll start with this one, top and bottom. 
and that one there as well. So that's the two slots that we need to install in. So slots four and slots two. I cannot stress enough how important it is to get these right the first time. It does save a lot of time and effort trying to diagnose why your system won't work. So what we need to do is to take account of the notch in the middle there, in the middle of our dim slot. And what you want to do is just line up your RAM and just make sure that the little cutout in the RAM matches up where the dot is. You can also get these lugs actually into the slots here. So just start at one end, make sure it's in, then do the other end. It should find it sort of slots in quite nicely. And you can let it just rest there. When you actually install it, you want to use some firm but even pressure on the top of the RAM slots and just push it down until both of these retention clasps firmly lock into place. So let's go ahead and do that now on this first stick. It will make a horrible crunching noise, but that is absolutely fine. If you want to, with a little bit of extra pressure after, you can just give it a little bit more and a very slight wiggle just to make sure that it's firmly seated. But in this instance, it's gone in first time, no problems. If for some reason it latches in, maybe one end and not the other, you can just undo the latches, get the ram stick out again, and just have another attempt. So let's do that again. That's pretty much in place. So again, firm pressure and listen for the crunch. And there we go. That is locked into place. So now we can do the one into number four. So again, line up your little notch with the notch actually on the motherboard. And I'm going to aim for that end first. Then that side there, just let it stay in place. That's absolutely fine. Then we can uh, again apply firm pressure evenly across the top there and just wait for the snap. There we go. And that snap actually sounds a little bit different, but the lugs there are firmly in place. So that is absolutely fine. So effectively, that is it for our RAM. The RAM is now installed. Again, if you want to, you can carry on and do the rest of the things you need to do, install your processor, all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to head over now to the BIOS on actually a different machine and take a look to see what settings we need to actually activate in the BIOS to get the most out of our new shiny RAM sticks. Okay, so this is the BIOS for my AMD system, actually, not the Intel one that you've just seen. So these will look a slightly different. The principles are the same. So if you're unsure of anything, of course, do reach out to our Discord and we'll try and help you out as best we can, or just let us know in the comments section. Much quicker to do it if you can from the Discord. So your main page should show you something very similar to this, MSI, ASUS, ASRock, etc., Gigabyte. They all show very similar things. So the one that you're going to be looking for is DRAM status here. So just make sure that your sticks are actually showing and as they are, so that is absolutely fine. So DIM A2 is showing there and DIM B2 with our thermal take RAM in this instance. And also we've got this section here. So for AMD systems, you're going to have Expo or DOCP. For Intel systems, you'll have Intel XMP or Extreme Memory Profile. So let's take a look at this. So at the moment we've got it enabled, so you probably find that yours is as standard set to disabled. So click on enabled. And that is effectively it for this section. More times than not, you can actually just save and exit here and just carry on about your business. But if you want to have slightly faster boot times and have a slightly more reliable system, especially in these early days of DDR5, we're going to need to go into advanced mode. Most motherboards are the similar sort of thing. So press F7 or just find a tab that says advanced mode. From there, we want to go into AI tweaker. So this is our RAM settings in AI Tweaker. So we've got our DRAM frequency, the XMP is locked in there. So we've got some options here for the AI overclock tuner and also your Expo settings or XMP settings. So there's a couple of options. You've got Expo 1, Expo 2, Expo Tweaked, Auto and Manual. I would strongly suggest if you have RAM, which is Expo enabled, choose either Expo 1 or Expo 2. If in your particular system, you've got XMP here, just choose your XMP profile. Expo 1 and Expo 2, very little difference between them. It does explain it here at the bottom. So the difference is basically Expo 2 is going to load the complete default Expo profile, whereas Expo 1 will load it, but it also give you some option to make some other changes. So we're going to go with Expo 1. So just press enter on that. We can see here our memory frequency. 
if you're running a processor which does not support this higher memory frequency that you've purchased, you can now go in here and choose a lower setting should you wish to. So if you're on AMD, you might want to choose 5600 or 5800, depending on what your RAM is, etc. Just uh, lower it down until you find a setting which is suitable for your particular system. In this instance, our RAM works fine at 6000, so we're going to leave it as that. There are other improvements you can make here, but we'll leave those for another video. The next thing to do is a really important one, and that is the memory context restore and also power down. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go into deeper settings of the RAM. So we're going to go into DRAM timing control. And in DRAM control, we can check to make sure our timings are locked in. Again, go back to the sticker on the side of your RAM and make sure that these four settings are as they should be. We can scroll all the way down here on this particular instance, or you can just do a search if you want to. Like I said, click on search and type in what it is. But we're looking for the setting, which is the memory power down, and also memory context restore. So memory context restore, that will essentially just check your memory. Every time it boots, it will try and reboot to the setting that it last successfully booted, therefore making it unnecessary to keep on training RAM, which it can take a long, long time. Now, if you do enable memory context restore, you do also need to enable power down. So power down enable will allow the memory voltages to be a little bit more flexible. So DDR5 goes into a low power mode at times. So if for some reason the memory context restore remembers the last setting and it was in a power down mode and you're rebooting and it's not in power down mode, you're gonna give either too much or too little voltage, you're gonna get blue screens of death. So essentially you want that enabled. So power down enabled should be on and memory context restore should be on. So at this point now, you can go back, choose exit save your changes and reset, and you should find your system is absolutely perfect, very stable, and works as it's intended to. Okay, so there we go. That is how to it physically install your DDR5 RAM, and also the important things to check in your motherboard BIOS to make sure it's actually gonna run as intended to. I should also say at this point, massive shout out to Lexar for providing us this DDR5 RAM, which is currently in our Intel test bed. This stuff is great and it's also at really good prices. So if you're looking for some DDR5 RAM and you want to get really good value, but also get really good sticks of RAM, then yeah, Lexar is definitely worth a shout. I'll put some links for this in the video description. I'm actually going to try and buy some more of this stuff. It does seem to be uh, actually really good pricing and also very high quality, which is awesome. And ultimately you want reliability in your system. So yeah, always choose to go with a decent brand. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap things up. Like I said in the video already, if you get any problems or you've got any questions regarding anything we've mentioned in this video, or you just need technical support in any facet of PC and computing, then please do reach out to us in our Discord chat. It's completely free to join. Uh, the links will be in the video description for that also. But I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.